Hey everyone, this is Jack from The Art of War, and I will be taking Custodes to the Streamhouse RTT. Let's talk about my list. I'm really looking forward to it. I think Custodes are a great time, and I really look forward to playing a bunch of fun, yet competitive games against my friends. Uh, I'm going to be starting out against Mark, who I know is playing Orcs of some description, not sure what. And then I'm going to play against either Blake or Richard if I do beat Mark. So. Those are the matchups I thought about when going into my list. So let's talk about it. I decided to take Shadow Keepers. Now, I, I do think that Emperor's Chosen is slightly better into an open field, but you know, we all know each other, we're all Tekken for each other. So I think Shadow Keepers is slightly better into Mark and Richard. And then whatever's coming at me from the other end of the bracket is, you know, that's my problem when I get there. So I'm looking at Tau and I'm looking at uh, either Blake is playing some kind of forces, I'm assuming Crusher Stampede, and particularly Mark. Mark, you cannot overlook Mark. Mark will just table you if you uh, are not, if you do not come correct. So let's look at the list. Shadow Keepers um, defends against Orcs because Orcs are, I know Mark likes his violence. He's going to run at me, and Shadow Keepers helps keep me alive through that. Uh, I also know against Tau, Emperor's Chosen, they don't have a lot of mortals, so Emperor's Chosen isn't as important, whereas Shadow Keeper's Grim Responsibility Strat can really help out sometimes. Um, mostly, mostly it's for Mark because I'm scared of him running at me and it's scary and he hits hard. <laughs> um, so let's look at it. We got Trajan Valoris because Trajan is absolutely amazing. He's actually, why is he 160? I don't understand. I would pay a clean 200 for him, but luckily I don't have to. Uh, he is my Warlord, because he gets two Warlord traits. He is insanely durable. He hits crazy hard. He benefits from Shield Host rules, so he has Shadow Keepers in this list. He has two Warlord traits. He gets me CP back. He rearranges my Kata's once a game. He rerolls all hits. He heroics six inches. He has a five of Feel No Pain. He gives me a CP for just taking him. He's 160 for some unknown reason. Whatever. He's amazing. I have a shield captain on Dawn Eagle Jet Bike. He does not have the standard uh, five up feel no pain because I wanted to try to make all my characters durable. So the shield captain on Dawn Eagle, he has a Salva Launcher and a Misericordia because uh, Salva Launchers are amazing and Misericordias are free. Um, then he has Lock Warden and Radiant Mantle, minus one to hit, minus one to be hit. And he has, uh, characters can't take invulns against him. So he runs around, he's a character assassin. He just runs around sniping people. He has tip of the spear, so he rules ones to hit and wound, and he has stasis oubliette. So he will make you fight last if you're in range of him. So he is just a little missile running around the board, tossing out fight last, sniping characters, charging characters, just doing basically whatever it is that I want to do. With him, with his speed, then we have the Blade Champion. The Blade Champion has the five of Fuma Pain. He has an extra wound off of Eagle's Eye. He can only be hit on fours. I'm going to make him only be wounded on fours, turn off rerolls. He does not die. Minus one attack, minus one strength. The eagle, I can give him a three up invul once a game. He has a five of Fuma Pain. This guy literally does not die. So that's going to be amazing into Orcs. It's going to be amazing into Tau, where my plan is to bodyguard him on the center. So. If he's bodyguarded in the center and the bodyguards get sniped out, or the super, the super fist, uh, you know, onager gauntlet, thermoneutronic projector guy with real hits and wounds comes in, then yeah, he's not dying to that. So he's super durable. He'll just knock around the orc matchup, just killing things left, right, and center, and never dying. That's amazing. He also heroic six, and he's going to be really good into whatever nonsense is coming at me from the other side of the bracket. Um, there's a lot of elves on that side, there's GSC, there's sisters, so it's a lot of uh, MSU units that cannot kill a blade champion, the shadow keepers with five of pain and eight wounds and a three up in one. So he should be very, very good in all those matchups, great at locking down objectives because he's obsec and heroic six inches. So those are my characters, very big fan of those. We got three custodian guard with sword and shield. They are not going to die to tower out of line of sight, so if they're on an objective, that objective is mine, that's quite nice. Uh, then I have six Sagittarium Guard with Misericordias. I think you need the Misericordias on these guys because they uh, they just don't hit hard in combat otherwise. People just run in and tag them. It's like, oh, I have a couple attacks. Here, have that. So Sagittarium Guard are quite good. The shooting adds up really fast. I'm a big fan of them. Then I have two squads of three Custodian Wardens with Axes and Misericordias. Uh, Custodian Wardens, the second squad, first squad is in there because it's amazing. 
Uh, bodyguard is just an amazing rule in 40k. It solves a lot of problems. The second squad is in there because of Richard. And yeah, uh, Richard is going to shoot me and I don't want to be shot. So these guys are going to park outside a line of sight with a character that cannot die and is obsec on the center objective. That'll heroic six inches in and kill whatever is on the center objective. So if Richard wants to take the objective back from me, he has to jump through like four or five hoops in order to take it back. And that's all I'm looking to do is just make his life a little bit harder so he doesn't just get to blast me. Um, so that second unit is in there for Richard because Richard's scary and don't like that. Uh, then finally, we have nine Virtus Praetors. Virtus Praetors are really good. They provide the speed that custodies want. They move quite far. They have a bunch of attacks now in Misericordia and they all have salvo launchers. So when they're near Trajan, they're going to reroll ones to hit and wound. Very reliable in terms of damage output. So what that means is I'll still pack the ranged punch to potentially pick up a squad of crisis suits if it gets too far away from the, the bulk of the horde or, you know, peel up a bunch of orc transports or orc. I don't know what Mark is taking, but he likes his kill rigs. They'll kill kill rigs real fast, especially with real wounds against characters. They'll pick up his trucks. They'll pick it. I mean, they're, they're just good into a lot of matchups, but they're really good into orcs. Uh, although I was already taking three units of three beforehand. Uh, mostly the blade champion is in there for Mark and the second squad of wardens is in there for Siegs because, uh, you know, as I said, they are very tough cookies. And if I don't take them seriously, they will run, they, you know, they can run me over and they're going to be teching for me too. So uh, anyway, that list I think is, uh, is quite a lot of fun. It still packs the speed that I'm looking for in Adeptus Custodes. Um, because if you're just durable, that can sometimes not be enough. Uh, you also have to be able to exert your will upon the board. And it has a whole bunch of infantry that can just be shadow keepers and stupid and exist in the center of the board and be like, yeah, this object is mine. I'm just going to hold this forever. Uh, you're not killing me off of it. And that's great. And then I have three characters that are all really p big pains to kill. I mean, the shield captain with minus one to hit. Minus one to hit is not usually a big deal, but when you can turn off rerolls, it gets frustrating fast, really, really fast. Um, so he's not quite as durable as if he had superior creation, but I'm spreading the durability out over all my characters, make them all really durable. And the blade champion does not die, just does not die in combat. Run the math, run a unit into him with, you know, minus one strength if it's applicable, no rerolls, transhuman, three up in Vulm, CP reroll on the save if you need to, five up feel no pain, eight wounds now with the relic. Run the math if you want. Nothing, nothing kills him in combat. It's pretty ridiculous. Unless they can ignore Zinvol, which not that common. So it, this should be a pretty fun event, a uh, fun list. We'll see how I do. I'm, uh, if, you, you know, if you're in the Custodes Discord, feel free to, uh, to at me, and uh, I'll respond to any questions that you have. And uh, wish me luck. All right, I will see you. I think my first game is Wednesday or Thursday. Not sure. Stay tuned for that. But... You know, wish me luck, and I'll see you in round one. Bye-bye. There's so many rules in 40K, hundreds of events, and constant updates. Skip the learning curve of Warhammer and join the pros. Art of War is led by multiple world champions with decades of success. We teach clinics, stream games, and inspire you to succeed at your favorite hobby. Join our global community of gamers just like you. 